Hello YouTube, I am Vince White, I am an employment attorney, and we, on this channel, answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users, getting folks the answer they need from an employment attorney. Um, if this video is helpful, like, subscribe, and comment. It does help me to help more people just like you. And remember, everybody works, not everybody wins. Everything, just knock them out up front. Right? Right? Get it out of the way. All right, so we have a question here from YouTube user your mom let me pull this up here and uh when you're watching this video i'm probably in sunny miami for a for a legal conference for employment attorneys so i hope you're well and also um bear with me got a bit of a cough today I'm trying to make the videos anyway i know it's not ideal for the audio i apologize i just i gotta pre-can these videos because i'm gonna be traveling okay All right, here's the question. Before I proceed to watch your video, what is your take on defamation cases? Have you ever taken one? Yes. Would you ever take one? Yes, uh, in rare circumstances. From the research I've done, it sounds like it seems like defamation cases are a whole lot harsher on the defendant over employment cases. Hence, the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard defamation case in 2022, uh, those are two very famous people with an incredible amount of attention on the case. I would not extrapolate information for yourself. I don't know if you're famous or not, but I presume you might not be. Um, their case is not going to have a lot of crossover with your case or your situation, likely. Is there some sort of crossover or spillover which legitimizes or makes defamation a primary claim instead of employment discrimination and or retaliation? Sure. I mean, if defamation is the only claim, you look at the defamation claim. There's not, <clears throat> generally speaking, if you have two equal claims, like a defamation claim and a, an employment discrimination claim that are of equal quality, you would bring both, right? It's just rare that the defamation case uh, is of equal quality. Generally, defamation cases are very high risk and uh, often very low value. Now, let me be clear. Defamation cases are cases that pen under state law. So when I speak about defamation, I'm speaking about the laws of New York and purely in generalities about other jurisdictions because I'm not allowed to advise you as the state laws of other jurisdictions. So you need to check with your local counsel. I don't know what the laws are where you are. I don't even currently know where you are. I'm just a talking head on the internet who's not even here right now. You just have my digital face while I'm in Miami. All right. Um, defamation and employment discrimination and or retaliation seem so similar based on my personal daily cruel experience of living defamation in the flesh. Ugh. <coughs> so, YouTube user, your mom, I have no idea what you experienced, but I'm sorry to hear it's been really difficult. Now, defamation claims are generally going to be much higher risk than employment claims um, because the standards in many jurisdictions are difficult to prove. There's a lot of things you have to prove. Like, have you, ha has the comment been properly publicized? What are the damages? Was the person expressing an opinion? Right. A lot of a lot of a lot of lay people can't understand. Like, they're like, I've been defamed. Ah! And it's like, the the statement was, I don't think that person's a good worker. Well, that's an expression of an opinion. How are you going to disprove that person's opinion? You're going to reach into their head and like minority report them and figure out that they are lying, that they don't hold that opinion? Probably not. Probably not going to happen, right? So, I mean, that's tough. So, what I'll say about defamation claims is <coughs> they can be valuable in rare circumstances. If you meet all of the criteria, if you have a real defamation case that, that really meets with the standards of evidence that you require for a claim like that and can show real damages, then yes, that is potentially a valuable claim. Here's the problem, though. It's going to be one out of 100 defamation claims, realistically. And a lot of employment litigants who have very legitimate employment claims will mentally get stuck on defamation claims. And you'll get in weird conversations like, I talked to 30 defamation attorneys and they all said my case is worth millions. 
there aren't 30 defamation attorneys in New York State. You moron. Like, I talked to the most famous defamation attorney, and he said my case was millions, but he just couldn't represent me. Okay, well, I know when I see a case worth millions in my prime practice area that I generally just push it out the door. That's That makes sense, right? Um, or, you you know, you're, you're having conversations with a client. You're trying to go over damages. And um, they just keep screaming, but what about the defamation? Uh, okay, well, you're a sanitation worker. And, like, four people learned of the comment that was made about you. So, um... I don't know that your career and your job prospects were horribly marred by one person's negative comment about you. Like, I, I don't know if we're really ticking the boxes of the elements of a defamation claim. To And obviously, this is hypothetical. I'm not talking about a real person, right? But you get in these, these tough conversations where people get stuck on defamation. And the reality is they, they don't really understand what defamation is. And I know this is not you, your mom. <coughs> They don't understand the standards that you have to prove, the elements you have to prove to, to be victorious on a defamation claim, and they don't understand how the defamation claim is valued. So every time you have a conversation, like a, like a valuation conversation, where you like start to go over the formulas of a case to say like, okay, well, let's look at what your case is potentially worth. Let's start plugging in the data so we can figure out the valuation. They're going to run over the defamation claim and scream about that because they don't want to face realities, right, uh, of the, the valuation of their case. And they don't understand the defamation case. They just know that sometimes famous people have defamation claims, and sometimes those claims have big price tags associated with them. And they think that, that means the defamation claims can just have any amount of damages. There's no, there's no formula. There's no criteria for damages and defamation claims. And so they'll get in these loops of screaming about defamation claims as a means of not discussing the actual valuation of their case. And that's tough. That's really tough. It's tough on them because it's going to lead them to not understand the valuation of their claims and make kind of questionable decisions. It's tough on the attorneys because every time we explain the valuation or every time we explain the flaws for the defamation claim, their response isn't like, oh, that makes sense. Their response is, no, false. No, I talked to 30 defamation attorneys. You, no, you didn't. Stop. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> right? Um, and it it's a recurring issue. Like, frankly, I see it like five times a year. And... It's hard. It's hard. And and you try to sit people down with like a rubric, like here are the elements of a defamation claim. Let's go over them one by one. How many people? How how broad was the statement? How how far was the statement about you disseminated? And let's be like, everyone in the world. Okay. Okay, you think everyone in the world would say your performance evaluation. Everyone. Okay. Okay. All right, let's try the next one. Let's try the next one. Is this a lie or a statement of opinion? It's a lie! Okay. Do you know the difference between a lie and a statement of opinion? No. Oh, okay. Can we define that? It's a lie. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, can you can we talk about how you feel this has harmed you? Millions. Uh, no, no, we gotta we gotta actually put like data together. There's got to be some kind of substantiation of this number that you're talking about. Millions. Oh, okay, okay. And you you start to understand that they can't like. It's not that they're stupid. They've built a fictional narrative in their mind about how this is going to go, and they've clung to it, right? And they can't let it go. 
And if you try to dissect it, you're the enemy. You're the enemy. They think you're a liar and you're trying to screw them over, right? And that's a real problem because they have real claims with real valuations that they don't care about. Right? There's there's value to their case, potentially. But they don't want to talk about that value. They only want to talk about the defamation, which is generally going to be very high risk and very low value. And that can be really, really tough. Now, this is not everyone. Some jurisdictions have very robust defamation statutes and case law, and it's easier to prove defamation in those jurisdictions. Ish. And, and there's people who have real legitimate very valuable defamation claims. Don't get me wrong. It's just rare. It's just rare. I've seen more people burned by their imaginary defamation claims by a factor of 10 than I've seen people who actually had valuable defamation claims. And it just seems to be kind of to your point, you know, it really burned you. It hurt you. that They lied about you. And that's, I think, part of what happens here. Like, people get upset about the lies. And they get stuck on that. And they can't go to where the money is. The claims that are valuable, sometimes. Um, I hope this answers your question. If it did, like and subscribe.